what are we going to do? What are we going to do when a woman comes to the village and she says, "I want a husband. I want to be married." Will that happen? Can that happen? Have you heard the hadith? One of the signs of the last day is that one man will have to maintain how many? Fifty women? Fifty women? I wonder what would cause that tremendous imbalance between men and women. Hmm? Could it be that the cause for the precipitous decline, alarming decline in the birth of baby boys would be because of something that will be damaging sperm <laughs> male chromosome. Hmm? We have a sister here who has some very interesting uh, thoughts on that subject and you will hear from her just now. But it is going to happen. And it has already started. An alarming decline of birth of baby boys so that a large number of women for a small number of men. That is something that will make Dajjal rub his hands in glee with smiling. Because that kind of pillow is going to create anarchy, sexual anarchy, promiscuity, zina, people stealing each other's husbands, a number of women sharing a single man, and he would be like a slave, because they will assign to him you go there tonight, you go there tonight, you go there tonight, you go there tonight. <laughs> yeah, they will assign to him what, he, what are his duties. Yeah. How do we solve that problem that is going to come tomorrow? It is not only a problem for women, it is also a problem, a major problem for men. And it is coming about because we are the authors of our own destruction. The laptop, and notice where the laptop is placed, and the Im impact of the radiation of the laptop on sperm production. The cellular phones, we had in the last retreat a medical doctor from Canada who addressed the retreat on this subject and who provided medical evidence that the use of cellular phones, you can only use a cellular phone when you have these antennas all over, because so the whole area is polluted with radiation, and if you are in that catchment area of this radiation, it affects your male sperm production, hmm? which incidentally means that we should try to locate the Muslim village in the place where cell phones and don't work. <laughs> Bad news for some people. Eh? <laughs> are addicted to the cell phones. You could dispense with your wife but not with your cell phone. <laughs> so we have a situation coming tomorrow. Those who consider this to be the best of all worlds would not be bothering about that. But we are reading this world as a world in which the signs of Allah are ominously unfolding. And we have to use the Quran and use Nabi Muhammad to understand and to respond. So what are we going to do when they have chaos out there in the cities? It's a sexual jungle out there in the cities. Where the women outnumber the men by such an alarming proportion. What? do we do? The answer is that every woman who comes to the village and who says, I want to be married, somebody has to marry her. So if your wife says, my husband 
can't take another wife. And she did not put that into the marriage contract at the time of marriage. She can do it. At the time of the marriage contract, she can do it. And if he agrees to it, then he has to abide by that. But if that was not then the marriage contract, then that wife better go back to Johannesburg. The implication is that the men of the village would have to marry every woman who comes to the village and who says, I want to be married. It is not uncharitable on my part to say that not all women are beautiful. Don't tell that to your wife that she's not beautiful. When she cooks, you must ensure that you say this is the best food. <laughs> In my case, I don't have to be untruthful because she does cook the best food. <laughs> you better say that. Not all women are beautiful, okay? There are some who are stunning in their beauty. But Allah says in the Quran that He created us from the earth like trees and plants. Where did He say that? Sheikh Ali Mustafa, you don't answer. He says in the Quran that he created us from the earth like trees and plants. Where did he say that? I said, Sheikh Ali Mustafa, do not answer. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Okay, so, okay. Give me the ayah. Masha Allah. Masha Allah from Egypt. Surah al -Nuh. Wallahu ambatakum. It doesn't say ambatalakum. It says Wallahu ambatakum. And Allah has caused you to grow forth. Wallahu ambatakum min al ardi. Allah has caused you to grow forth from the earth. Nabata. <coughs> like trees and plants. And so in the same way that there are some trees which are ornamental trees, so too there are some women who are stunning in their beauty. And in the same way that there are some trees which are for timber, and some trees which are medicinal trees, and some trees for lovely shade, and some trees for fruit, and some trees for food, and you can go on. So two human beings are different. They're not all the same. So not because she's not the most beautiful woman in the world, would you say you're not going to marry her? No. I am marrying you because I want a house in heaven. That's why I'm marrying you. You may have a wife and you may be very happy with your wife, very happy with your family, and to take a second or a third wife is going to make your life more difficult for you. But I'm going to do it for Allah's sake. For Allah's sake. And so in the Muslim village, we must try as best as we can to ensure that there is no woman in the village who wants to be married and is not married. MashaAllah. If we can do that in the village, we'll teach a lesson to the city. But warning. A warning. In this village we are a family. So if a man abuses his wife, the village is going to come after him. Oh yes. If she comes to the Amir with tears in her eyes, about a husband who is abusing her, the whole village is going to come after you. <coughs> if he does not maintain his family, the village will cry shame on you. Hmm? If he is treating his wives unequally, give this one the diamonds, and this, give this one, he gives what? Is what is synthetic? <coughs> Costume? Crystal. Yeah. Sheikh Ali Mr. Sheikh Ali Mr. Fagil's diamonds. Yeah. So, 
So if you don't treat your wives justly, it is the business of the village. You can't say, stay out of my business. This is my private life. No. Once your wife complains, it becomes the duty of the village to respond. And so we are going to attempt to solve the problem through the institution of plural marriages, which is there in Islam, a mechanism inbuilt to allow us to resolve this problem that they cannot solve. But what about our baby girls? When should they be married? Who should answer that question? The New York Times or CNN? <laughs> Let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you have any disagreement with him, wait until judgment day and you speak to him. Mary, Maria, the mother of Jesus, is assigned to the temple because the mother had made a vow. And she lives in the temple under the guardianship of Zakaria alayhi salam. And the priests in the temple, the rabbis in the temple, oh, they had a good time. You don't have a girl in the temple. <laughs> it's usually boys. So there must have been a lot of fun in the temple with that little girl in the temple. But when she reached the age of puberty, where now she has a menstrual cycle, she can no longer remain in the temple for a number of reasons we don't need to mention them. So she goes back to her parents' home. How old is she? That is irrelevant. What we are concerned with is biological age. She has now reached the age of puberty. That age differs for different times. Okay? It is at this time that Allah sends the angel, Ibrahim alayhi salam. And when the angel comes to her, she becomes pregnant. So it is shortly after the age of puberty that Allah chose that she should become a mother. Are you going to say to him that he is irresponsible? Who are you going to do that? The divine wisdom is at work. And now we come to the more interesting one. They say that the Prophet was married Aisha. He married Aisha. Radiallahu ta'ala I'm not bothered about the age. That's not important now, whether it was six or seven or eight or nine or ten. So don't talk to me on that. He married Aisha. Where is the evidence? You are the one who said it, eh? Who conducted the marriage? And who were the witnesses? Hatu Burhanakum. In a marriage, you have the freedom to choose to marry. And if you want to decline, you have the freedom to decline, otherwise the marriage contract is invalid. Was this present in this marriage ceremony? <laughs> huh? So if you say that there was a marriage ceremony, that's the only way you could possibly say that he married her. If you say that he married her, then there had to be a marriage ceremony. And if there was a marriage ceremony, these are the conditions of a marriage ceremony. And I say he never married her. So I don't have to bring all that problem. 